Hey, Bridge City Church, so excited you decided to join us here for our online worship experience. I'm Pastor Nick from the White Oak Campus. And if you're new here with us, I'd like to officially welcome you. And we actually have a gift for you. If you click the link on the screen and let us know that this is your first time, we have a coffee for you from Starbucks. And I know everybody likes Starbucks, and especially if it's free, all the costs are going up everywhere. So let us know that this is your first time here, and we'll send that gift card over to you. Not because we want you to have a free coffee, but we want you to get connected to everything that's going on here at Bridge City Church. And I actually want to share some vision for some things that are coming up here at Bridge City Church. And one of the things that's most exciting is our connection groups are getting ready to launch here on September 11th. And actually the link to all the groups that are happening this semester is on the screen. So you can click that and start to prepare and plan and pray for the group that you want to attend. But they'll officially kick off on September 11th at all of our campuses. We'll have a big kickoff for connection groups. And connection groups are really simple. It's a group of friends that get together pray, read the Bible, and decide what their next step is going to be because we're designed to grow together and walk together in this discipleship process with Jesus. And we're excited about connection groups. And also, our Overflow Women's event is coming up here. All the information is available on the website, but this year's event is entitled The Grand Design, and it's for women to find out how they're designed to function within the kingdom. This event, every single year, it empowers women, it equips women, it challenges women to be able to function within the kingdom. And I'm so excited for all the women across Bridge City Church and across the city of Pittsburgh as a whole to get to experience what God has prepared for each of them. So please make sure you get registered, make sure you invite your friends, your family, your neighbors, everybody that you can to this event for the ladies of not only Bridge City Church, but the surrounding area. We're so excited for this event. And also we get to celebrate. Bridge City Church is celebrating 40 years as a church, 40 years in existence. Who would have thought that the vision that was cast and implanted into the hearts of people 40 years ago would be what it is now. And we get to celebrate this over September 17th and September 18th. We're gonna gather as one church in a couple locations. And I say that because on September 17th, we're going to gather at Kennywood. All of our campuses are going to get together and have a time of celebration at Kennywood. Tickets are available at all of the campuses uh, for $15. That is a huge discount to what it costs to get into Kennywood. All children three and under are going to be free. So please make sure you get to one of our campuses or get to the church office and purchase one of your tickets for September 17th. We're going to have a huge celebration at Kennywood. More information to follow regarding that. And also on September 18th, all of our campuses are going to gather one church in one location at our North Braddock campus for two worship celebrations to celebrate our 40th anniversary. We're so happy that we get to gather together and look at all of God's doings over the last 40 years and look forward to what he has planned to do over the next 40. And we celebrate that and we're excited. And I'm asking you wherever you're at, to stand to your feet, still yourself, remove the distractions because we're getting ready to worship our God. And let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to worship you. Lord, I pray that as we worship you, that we would glorify your name, that we would raise you up, and that we would truly not just worship in song, but live a lifestyle of worship in everything we do. In Jesus' name, let's worship church. Hey Bridge City, I'm Aaron from our Brighton Heights campus. We're super excited to worship with you today. So let's raise a hallelujah. I'll raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I'll raise a
Till my 
There are some folks who very much want to say thank you for your kindness and generosity. Because of you, they have food and basic medicine. Their homes have been destroyed, their jobs and businesses ruined, many living in tough circumstances, yet they are thankful. They are thankful to people they have never met and may never meet this side of heaven. Because you responded quickly and generously, we are able to continue to ship loads of food on a regular basis right into the war zone where the needs are great. Each day, people line up to get the basic necessities. And then there are those who have left to go to Romania awaiting the end of the war. We are making sure their needs are being met as well. The network of churches which are the distribution points for the food and medicines we are sending, they are so thankful for our continued support to them. One of their greatest concerns is that because they are no longer front page news, they will be forgotten even as this heartbreaking situation continues. They are using every opportunity to share the love of Jesus with those who are completely hopeless, homeless, and really helpless. These churches have not abandoned their communities. These pastors have not left town and we won't leave them. Not only are they serving, they are doing with joy. They just want to say thank you. Please don't forget them. I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians 9, 13, Because of the proof given by this ministry, they will glorify God for your obedience, for the confession of the gospel of Christ, and for the liberality of your contribution to them and to all. Hey friends, just want to take a moment and say thank you so much, uh, NRP, uh, to every pastor, to every family, to every church that's part of this wonderful network. Thank you for your investment in the lives of people, uh, both in Romania and Ukraine, and thank you for partnering with us so we can make a difference in the lives of refugees in Ukraine. God bless you. And I wanted to express our gratitude to the network of related pastors and uh, The help provided us uh, for the food and accommodation of these uh, Ukrainian refugees. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Keith, for that amazing update of the ministry that's going on in Ukraine. And I'm so honored and privileged that we get to be a part of what God's doing both in and through that ministry uh, here at Bridge City Church. And we get to be a part uh, financially of what's going on there by our One Vision campaign and contributing and continuing to be a part through what God's doing. And I wanna give you an update on our One Vision campaign and what's going on there. To date, we have received $443,325.20. That's what we've received so far of what has been committed out of the $1.8 million. And that is amazing. We're so, so thankful that you continue to give of your commitment. And out of that so far, we have given away $56,300 to missions. And that has gone towards Ukraine. We have been able to send money straight towards Ukraine. And today we are receiving a special offering. If you've never been a part, if you've never had the opportunity to give, if you've never been able to say that you've contributed to that, we want to make sure that you have that opportunity. So click the link on the screen and let us know that you'd like to contribute. Or maybe you want to make a commitment to the One Vision campaign. You're not a part of that. Click the link on the screen and you can become a part of what's going on there. 
And now I just want to make a transition to our normal tithes and offerings. And this is a, a, a time that we get to continue worshiping God. We just had our, our team lead us in worship and lead us into the presence of God. But we get to continue worship, not just in song, but in our obedience and our tithes and offerings. And we're getting ready to hear a message from our lead pastor, Pastor Rick Paladin. He's going to teach us about one of the miracles that Jesus did in the feeding of the 5,000. And we get to see the, the uh, obedience of the disciples, the obedience that they had in the feeding of the 5,000. And in Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And listen, every disciple of Jesus can be mightily used by God by following some very simple principles. Understanding that our greatest ability is our availability and that God blesses and multiplies what's given back to Him. And I wanna focus that on that point, that we can be used by God when we return to Him what's rightfully His, and He blesses and multiplies it and uses it in ways that we can't even fathom. So as we give back to God today, whether it is in our missions offering, in the One Vision campaign or our commitment, or maybe our first time ever giving to Ukraine or in our normal tithes and offerings. I want us to recognize that God blesses and multiplies through our obedience. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity that we have to return to you what's rightfully yours. And Lord, I thank you for the blessing that it is. Lord, I pray that you would give us continued obedience, continued faith, and Lord, that you would give us the wisdom and knowledge that it takes to use these funds to grow your kingdom and glorify your name. And Lord, give us the faith to step out, maybe for the first time, to give and to return to you what's rightfully yours. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, as you prepare to hear the message from Pastor Rick, our lead pastor, I pray that you get your Bibles ready, get your notepads ready, and let's listen to the message. church, here we are with the last in this long, long series entitled Sunday School, where we've been looking at very typical messages that we teach kids in our Sunday school. That's right, it's our Bridge City Church Kids Ministry. And so we've been looking at a lot of stories, and today we have a really, really good one. It's about Jesus and Jesus feeding the 5,000. Yes, a huge, big miracle. And, you know, miracles are set up by principles. Like if we're living a certain way, I believe we're setting ourselves up for a miracle to happen. And there's been a lot of times in my life that what's, what's happened is, 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 is I've, I've come to the decision that, that there's three basic principles that has guided my life over these last years. They're not the only ones. There's just the three biggest ones. Let me give you an example. The first decision that I made was this, is that I'm going to love my wife, Natalie, lay my life down for her. And no matter what she gives me in return, I am going to do what's right before God. That was my first one. The second one was, is that I'm going to live and, and be a part of Jesus' church. Being a part of Jesus' church is not an option. Being under authority is not an option. And as a matter of fact, being a part of Bridge City Church is not an option. That, that's, there's, there's just, that's just not even, that's not even on the board for discussion right now of not to be a part of, of, of Jesus' church. The third one was, is that Natalie and I decided that we're going to live with, with just gener generosity. We're going to be just generous, not only with our money, but that's primarily it, but our time and our lives. So we just wanted to live with a spirit of generosity. I want to be a generous giver. These three principles, I believe, have set me up to see God do some really, really cool, miraculous things in my life and even 
in our church's life. And so I'm saying those, those are just my principles. They, they don't have to be yours. I'm not preaching those or sharing those, saying you need to adopt mine. I'm just saying you need to have principles that you live by. And depending on your principles or depending on how miraculous you're going to live for God. Okay, here's the big idea. Here's the big idea for today. This is it. Every disciple, that's right, every disciple can be used mightily by God by living by these three principles. Number one, our greatest ability is our availability. Number two, God blesses and multiplies what's giving back to him. And number three, generously distribute what God has given to you. These are the three principles that we're going to unwrap in the Gospel of Mark chapter 6. So here it is. Here's our memory verse. Here's the, here's the verse of the day. And actually it comes out of Ephesians chapter 3. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we could ask or think. Wow. So here, here it is. How can we see God meet needs miraculously in our lives? Now, here we go. Mark chapter 6, and here's some context to Mark chapter 6. Now, first of all, I just want to point out, besides the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which was a really huge miracle, this feeding of the 5,000 is the only other miracle that's mentioned in all four of the Gospels. That's right. All four of the Gospels contain this story. So there must be something about it that God wants us to see and God wants to reveal to us. It makes it very, very significant. Now, as you read different stories in the Bible, in different Gospels, there's something very interesting. And many people get caught up on the differences. See, there's, there's differences from Matthew to Luke or from, from John to, to, to Mark. And, 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 and see, the Bible contradicts itself. Well, the, the, the reason is, is because as the writers wrote, they wrote with their perception in mind. Let me use this illustration. Um, a couple years ago, went to Aruba. And our first night there, we were, Natalie and I were with some friends. And the first night we went to, it was advertised as a buffet. But as we went to the buffet, we learned quickly that it really wasn't a buffet like you and I think of a buffet. You can eat as much as you want. What it was, it was the one plate buffet. That's right, you get one plate and you can put as much on that one plate as you want. That was your buffet. And it was served on a patio, but we ate with, a, with our table in the sand. So let me give you an example. If somebody would say, hey, did you go to a buffet? I would say, yes, it was advertised a buffet. But then if I said, hey, but, uh, but I only had one plate, I didn't lie or contradict. It was a buffet. I had one plate. If somebody were to say to one of our friends, hey, when, when you were there, yeah, we walked on the patio getting our food. True statement. Oh, but then Natalie said, but we sat and, and the sand was, was on our feet. True statement. See, what I'm trying to communicate, a lot of the times in the Bible, what we're trying to do is prove it's wrong, and really it's different viewpoints. You have to look at it different ways, and you're seeing a bigger picture. That is so true when it comes to the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. So here it is. In text, in context, John the Baptist, who was a very significant figure in the Bible, Jesus' cousin, uh, he was just killed. And Jesus uh, took his disciples, went off uh, by himself, uh, took them on a rest here. And then actually he was uh, commissioning his disciples to go and do work. Up to this point, Jesus was doing all the work, but something was beginning to change. He was beginning to ask the disciples, and he was beginning to empower them for the work of the ministry here. And so they went off by themselves, and they went to a quiet place to rest. That's in verse, verse 30 here. Now, it's interesting that rest really, you know, what, what rest really is, is it's, it's, to, it's to cease from toil. It's to be refreshed. It's to pull away. If we're going to see God do miraculous things in our lives, we have to regularly have rest in our lives. Actually, what rest means is intermission. That means we've been working. We need to take a break, get refreshed, and then get back to work for God. That's what Jesus did over and over and over. And that is what we see as the basis of Jesus' miraculous life. And so if we're going to see the miraculous, 
We need to regularly pull away, regularly have quiet time, regularly get refreshed by Jesus. Here we go, verse 34. Jesus saw a huge crowd. As he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them because they were sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Wow, okay, here's a huge crowd. And what that word huge literally means is <laughs> multitudinous. That means plenteous, much. I mean, couldn't you just see the disciples like, look at this huge crowd. It's like, this crowd is so multitudinous. That's really what it, it, what it means is there's a large, large amount. It's huge. It's much. It's, it's big. And so this crowd, and so Jesus sees them and he has compassion. And compassion, literally, if you look at this word, what it means is it, it's, it's, it's the lung, the liver, the kidneys. It's the innermost part of you. And what he was saying was, Jesus was moved in the innermost part. Have you ever been so emotional and so moved that something deep within you moved? You could feel it in your stomach. That's what kind of compassion Jesus had. And if we're going to see Jesus meet the needs for other people, that's what kind of compassion we're going to have. It's a compassion that moves us here. And, and, and Jesus began to teach them, which doesn't mean he began to fill their heads with more information. What I believe is Jesus was caring for them. Jesus was moving them in a direction. Jesus was, uh, was prompting them to, to, to live a certain way, to think a different way, and their actions to change. That's why we're here, listening to the Word of God right now, so that we can change. We can be more like Jesus, and, and we can think different, and act different, and, and do different things for God than we could on our own. That's truly what teaching is. It's not about the information. It's about the revelation of the man, Jesus. That's the purpose. That's what we're after here. That's what we're looking for here. So here it is. Jesus pulled his disciples away. They rested. They, they got refreshed. And, and then he sent his disciples out to do some work. But he pulled them aside. Rest with me. But now he sees, the, sees compassion and he jumps back in. That's what true rest does. Why do we need the Sabbath? Why do I pull away? Why do I read my Bible regularly in the morning and just spend time with Jesus so I have something to give those around me? Not just the pastor part of me, but the Christian part of me, the disciple part of me, the part of me that wants to see God distribute and show himself to other people. Okay, here's the big, here's the, we're going back to the big idea here. Our greatest ability is our availability. That's right. Every disciple can be used mightily by God by following this principle. My greatest ability is my availability. Let's look at verse 35. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. And Jesus said, you feed them. Wow. With what, they asked. We have to work for, we'd have to work for months to get enough money to buy food for all these people. So let's first of all see this. Jesus' disciples are followers. Followers, disciples. I'm not just a believer in Jesus. I'm a follower. I have been discipled, and I am continuing to be discipled. So what's a disciple? A disciple, disciple is a learner. It's a pupil. It's a student. It's one who has been learning. They follow the teacher and the teaching. They don't just listen to the teaching, but they're following the man, Jesus. See, you know you're being discipled because you have a relationship with somebody who's discipling you, that's making you more like Jesus, but you have a relationship ongoing because you're following them and the teaching. What this really is, a disciple walks in complete obedience to the word of God. So here we are. Disciples are the ones who get to do miracles here. They weren't just acknowledgers. They were followers. They were disciples here. That's what's so important. They were under authority. Now there's this word used in our culture all the time called mentor. I have a mentor. Now I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here to preach against having a mentor, but what I am saying is this is that if we really want to become like Jesus, it's, we're going to need to become disciples, not just men, mentorees or mentors. Now, I'm not against that. I'm just saying, but we go to another level because Jesus was about to take his disciples to a level of uncomfortability. That's right, uncomfortable that they could do something on their own. So what, how available am I with my life? 
my calendar. We live in a culture right now that is calendar focused. If, if what you want from me lines up with my calendar and my time, I will do it. Rather than saying my calendar, my life is available and open to Jesus. That's first and foremost, my availability here. Now, in this story, the disciples and Jesus saw the same crowd. The disciples, we can't do, meet this need. The need is too great. The money's too great. They both saw the same thing, but Jesus saw it differently. And if we're going to see the multitude, if we're going to see Jesus do something miraculously with other people, we're going to have to go beyond what we see into what he sees. This is so vitally important. And not only this, they start dictating to Jesus what he should do. Now, I believe they didn't realize what they were doing. Just like you and I, when we start telling God what we will and won't do, what we, we start telling Jesus what he should do, I, we do the same thing. Hey, God, there's this great problem. You ought to do something about it. That church ought to do something about it. Those people ought to do something about it. Oh, God, that needs too great. The church shouldn't be doing this. The church should be doing this. Shouldn't, should, can't, won't. We start dictating to God what he can and can't do because we're looking with our natural eyes rather than with Jesus' eyes. I do this regularly. And the only way to get out of that is to repent and say, Jesus, I'm sorry for trying to be God. Uh, you're God and I'm not here. You see, Jesus had a solution. You feed them. You give them something to eat here. This is it. See, Jesus was about to invite them to live one level above and beyond what they could do on their own. That's faith. And at Bridge City Church, that's what we do. We are not ashamed nor afraid, and we will unapologetically invite people to live one level above and beyond what they could do on their own. Why? Because I and our leaders in our church, we want you to live one level above beyond what you can do to experience what God can do because that's faith. And after all, without faith, it's impossible to please God. That is the truth right there. So this, so, 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 so Jesus works through uh, imperfect people just like you and me, ordinary with prejudices and with thoughts and with all these things, he's about to empower them. You feed them. You give them something to eat here. See, the disciples responded based on their lack beyond, and maybe, I don't know, I, I can't judge their intentions. Maybe they thought, well, we don't have enough. Maybe they thought this is a waste. Maybe they thought all these different things. I don't know, but I do know this. They were caught up in what they could do, not what God could do. Wow. Come on, I believe that God wants to do infinitely above and beyond anything we could ask or think through his power. That's the power of God. Basically, in this text, they were saying that, that it was going to take 200 denarii, which would be literally a year's wage with, uh, for a laborer. That would literally mean, they were saying, look, it's going to take twenty-five dollars to $30,000 to feed this crowd. Wow, that's a lot of money here. And so I don't know what they were thinking, but that is a lot. And sometimes God asks us to do something. But listen, we, we at Bridge City Church, we're right in the middle of a huge vision campaign, which we had people commit to give $1.8 million. And many people say, well, that, that's a waste. That's too much. How could God use that? that? Why are you getting money for buildings and for things like that? I'm going to tell you why, because Jesus wants us to feed the multitudes. He wants us to feed so much more, and he wants to do infinitely above and beyond anything we could ask or think. And so regardless of what you think about the One Vision campaign, we're thinking great things because God wants to meet us where we are. God wants to feed. God wants us to, to, to shepherd those who don't have a shepherd and sheep without a shepherd that aren't cared for and hurried and harassed. That's what this is about. See, Jesus saw beyond the need and saw people. That's what the, the basis of a miracle here. See, many times we can say the people are... There's too many people. We can't, we can't make a difference. The money's too great. We don't have enough. But if we want to see God do miraculous, because after all, every disciple, every disciple, every disciple can see God do, do, do miraculous things, do great miraculous things if we'll follow this principle. I'm just available to God. 
I'm available to him, my time, my talent, my treasure. Everything is there. We can be used mightily by God by following that first principle that our, that listen, our availability is our greatest ability. That's true. But number two, let's move to number two now. Jesus multiplies what we give back to him. Jesus multiplies what we give back to him. Let's pick it up here in verse 38. How much bread do you have? Jesus asked, and he says, hey, go, go find out what you do have. Remember, go, go find out what's available. I'll find out here. They came back and reported, we have five loaves, two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups. Sit them, sit them down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of 50 or 100 here. Now, typically in this story, you may have heard it like this in your Sunday school experience, there's a little boy mentioned. Now, as I mentioned earlier, in different Gospels emphasize different parts of the story. In the way the Gospel of John tells it in 6 verse 9, chapter 6 verse 9, there was a little boy that had his lunch. And the little boy had his lunch, that's why it's typically told. And he had this lunch, which would be enough for maybe two people, maybe three. And so he presents it. Now, I just want to say this, that that little boy, you know, I, nobody stole his lunch. Nobody bullied him and took it. He, it looks like he freely gave it. But I want to say this, that for God to start a miracle and start feeding people and do something great, let's never get wrapped up in somebody's age. Let's not get wrapped up in trying to be mature enough or old enough or, or far enough along down the line. Let's just get wrapped up into the, God's greatness. This little boy surrendered his lunch. Now remember, what do you have? Start with what you have where you are and give it to God. That's the point. See, that fish and bread was no good if they kept it to themselves. There's no way they were going to feed all these people, this multitudinous amounts of people here. But, but, but they were going to give it to Jesus here. Listen, listen, that's the point here. Are we willing to surrender to God here? So Jesus organizes them. In, in groups. He gives, them, he gives them groups here. Groups to sit in. We believe in groups. As a matter of fact, we have groups kicking off real soon here at Bridge City Church. And we want you to be in a small group, in a connection group. We want you to be a part of a group of people because here we see Jesus organizing people in groups so that the needs can get met. And many people in church don't get their needs met because they're not in a group. And if I can get you in a group surrounded by a group of friends that read the Bible and they discuss it and they, and they pray together and they talk about what, they're gonna, what their next step is for God, they're going to become followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the point. So Jesus organizes them in groups because Jesus likes organization here. He loves organization. That's what it's, that's what it's all about here. So, so Jesus, so we give it to God. Now, now listen, when I, when I say we're going to give it to God here, we need to realize we give everything to God. Everything I own belongs to God. And we're going to continue to uncover that here. So Jesus multiplies what is given back to him. Verse 41 Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. He looked up toward heaven. He blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread of the disciples so they would, could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. So these little fishies, he, he begins to multiply them. So as they give it to Jesus, he multiplies it. He begins to, he begins to do a miracle with what's in his hands hands here. That's so important. Now, Jesus, let me, let me just point out a little point here that I think is so big. Jesus blesses. He never blesses the fish and loaves. He blesses God for providing it. Wow. Stop right here. When we, well, everything we have belongs to God. And so I think sometimes we're trying to get God to bless my car, bless my finances, bless my kids, bless my dog, bless my you know, work, bless my, bless my, bless my, all my stuff. And here, Jesus looks at what he has, and the way he multiplies is he looks to God, and, and it's in Jesus' hands now, because in, in, and something big begins to happen. In our culture right now, we have lost stopping and thanking and honoring God for even our food on a regular basis. 
Now, many people say, well, you've got to bless that food. You don't want to choke on it. You don't want to have all these things happen. No, 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 you're missing the point. No, I want to honor God and thank him for being such a huge, big, awesome God in giving us what we have here. Listen, let's never stop to put it back in God's hands. Let's never become so self-sufficient, arrogant as it may be, that I provided this food. I bought it. And God's not in the equation. See, many times we never receive back from God because we never place things in his hands. That's right. This is my car. No. How about we bless God and thank him for it? This is my money. No. When I, when I give generously and sacrificially, I give it to God. I bless, I bless God that I can do it. Thank God for the privilege of giving. I'm not looked at my little, or I'm not looked at my lack. I look to how great God is. I give it to Him. And we're wondering why our homes, our marriages, our families, our finances, our work is not blessed. It's because we haven't surrendered it to God's hands. God does miracles by what we give to Him, not by what we do on our own for Him. Wow. Every disciple can be used mightily. Mightily by God by following these three principles. First is, our availability is our greatest ability. Wow. Jesus multiplies and blesses what we surrender to him. Number three, here it is. Generously distribute what God has given back to you. Remember in that previous verse, Jesus blessed it and then he gave it back. See, as I give, as I, as I honor God first, as I honor God with most and I honor him and thank him, this, I'm not just blessing my stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm blessing God by saying, you gave it to me, you own it all, and then he gives it back for us to distribute. Wow. Here it is. The miracle of God is stirred here. And, this is, and, and, and he gives it so we can give it away. How are the multitudes going to be blessed? How, are, how can we reach Pittsburgh? How can we reach this world? It's through you and me. By being available to God and believing God that he can do infinitely above and beyond anything that I could think or imagine. Wow! So here we find in verse 42, they all ate as much as they wanted. Jesus didn't just give them what they needed. He gave them as much as they wanted. It wasn't a one-plate buffet. It was a full buffet. Come on. And afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of 5,000 men we're fed. Now, if there was 5,000 men, and then you add in the women, and add in the children, it was most likely anywhere between fifteen to 20,000 people just had fish and bread. What? That's right, in groups. He sat them in groups and fed them. Yes, he does infinitely above and beyond anything we could think or imagine. That's what kind of God, but we have to be willing to distribute what he's given. We don't live for ourselves. We don't live for our own needs. We're living for God and we're living in a great way for him. That's the purpose of here. Listen, we're going to pass. We're, this is what Jesus wants to do. Jesus took his disciples from being consumers to contributors. What do you have? Not just those who are going to eat the fish, but now we give it to God, but then he takes them to another level of discipleship, being a distributor and releasing what he does. That's how we're going to see God do miraculously so much more than we could ever think. What are we going to do with our One Vision campaign? We're going to give it away. We're going to, we're going to, we were already giving it away to missions, as you heard. We're going to do more with it. We're going to give it away because that's where the power is here. He's going, to, he's going to do something mightily with us. So here's the rest of the story. The rest of the story is this. Because they were available, and, and their availability is their greatest ability, and then God, Jesus, blesses what's given to him. He multiplies and blesses what's in his hands Wow. And then we begin to generously distribute what he does for us. Wow. That's how he does. And that's how he works through his disciples. But the rest of the story is this. As soon as this is over, immediately in verse 45, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back in the boat and head across the lake. And after telling everyone goodbye, he went off to a way to pray. Remember I said in the beginning, 
The miraculous power of God is found in the quiet place. It's found in sitting quietly, my quiet time with God, my time in the Word of God, my time in prayer. I'm urging you to go back to your quiet time. I'm urging and pleading to go back to that devotion time with God because that's where the miraculous, that's where the God thoughts and not our natural thoughts take over here. Wow. In the rest of the chapter, there's a storm and these things happen and, and there's a storm happening and Jesus comes walking on the water to the disciples because they're in peril here. And, and, and they're like, what's just happening? And there's an interesting verse in verse 52 that, that for some reason the Gospel of Mark puts in here and I think it's so interesting. For they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves, which happened just right before this. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. Th that word hard there means petrified, calloused. Um, it's spiritual blindness, it's deafness. Do you know what happens in our lives? We become spiritually deaf and blind. We become hard-headed, emphasis mind. Our hearts become hard and petrified. We begin to tell Jesus what he should do rather than listening what he wants us to do. We begin putting limits on God and we don't even realize it. May Bridge City Church never be that place where God says they're just too hard-headed to get it. They don't get what's going on. May we never be that place that God doesn't do a miraculous thing through and in us. Let's never be those people, church. Let's never be controlled by those things. Let's be controlled and let's be, be moving forward together, believing God that every disciple can be used mightily by God and as we follow these principles together. And then let's watch and see what God will do in our lives so that we, Bridge City Church, can reach as many people as possible. That's right, you and me being distributors of all that God has done in us. Wow, that is the miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000, which now you know really was more like 15 to 20,000. Wow. Hey, thanks so much for being here, but before I close up, I have to share just a few more minutes with you, and that is this. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you never asked Jesus Christ to come into your life and, and, and go through that petrified, hard heart that you have there, Jesus wants to do that and he can do that. He can give us a new heart, a new mind, a new way to think and a new way to live that will be prosperous when we give it to him. If you don't have that day or moment or time, I want to offer you right now an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus, just like that little boy surrendered his lunch. So surrender to Jesus what, who you are and watch him bless and multiply his goodness in your life. Yes, it starts by saying, Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I want to repent of my past and all my sin. And I ask you, Jesus, to lead me into my future. Ask Jesus to forgive you and lead you into your future. And watch what he will do for you. I know that I know it will be infinitely above and beyond whatever you could think or imagine because following Jesus is a great, great joy. Hey, thanks so much for being here. This has been such a blast. And so, so much fun looking at these stories together. Thanks for being here and make sure that you're back with us next week. Thank you so much, Pastor Rick, for that message. I pray that we continue to walk in obedience to Jesus. And if you wanna to make today the day that you choose to give your life to Jesus, just click the link on the screen and let us know so that we can help you walk through that decision. We wanna pray with you, we wanna encourage you, and we wanna help you walk through your life with Jesus because you weren't created to do that alone. Also, there's lots of things going on at Bridge City Church. Make sure you get to the website, check out all the events, and we hope to see you soon at one of them. Have a great week and be blessed.